Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In previous videos, I launched an interplanetary ship using basically two shuttle stacks. We had two external tanks and four boosters plus the SSMEs that you see there. And now we need to refuel that ship so that it can go to interplanetary places. And this is the refueler. Now, I've decided that taking the engines off, as I did in the previous video, was a little bit cumbersome having Kerbals actually take off the engines. So now we have this Pac-Man engine shroud that I had made a long time ago and a smart reuse module. So a decoupler, a heat shield, and then the Pac-Man encapsulation device that you see there that has tweak scale, it has the parachutes on the side of it, and an RCS thrusters which use hydrogen and oxygen gas. So not super efficient, but good enough. And there are two ways of doing this as far as I could tell. Either we use two other external tanks to carry the hydrogen that we need to refuel the ship, or we have one tank on top of it. And the issue is that with the two tanks, I'm not filling it up all the way, and with the one tank, it gets a little bit cumbersome to actually maneuver it to dock if we keep the rest of the assembly. So I decided that we would not keep the rest of the assembly. Instead, I would decouple off the top of it. We would dispense with the external tanks. After all, we're not sending this anywhere. We're not reusing it or anything like that. So the, the tank on top, it doesn't really need to be that big. Uh, it turns out that the numbers in the Delta V stats were messing with me and it, it can be smaller. It doesn't have to be that big. But anyway, it's its own vehicle now. I didn't use one of the actual external tanks for the top version one because I wanted the nose cone that has a docking port in it. So we wouldn't have that with the external tank. As you can see, I decided to try out the four external tank version first. I actually gave my live stream audience on Twitch a vote on which one they would like to see, and I just went with the first vote, actually. Uh, so the first person voted for this version, so I went with it. But the problem with this is that it just has extra drag, right? Uh, if we have the tank on top, it's actually not got more drag than the original setup, because we have the center portion there already, so that was already, already going to be getting extra drag. And so we just have two external tanks more, creating more drag. And that's not great. So ultimately it seemed like we wouldn't be getting to orbit and so I decided to ditch this attempt. Because after all we're already under fueling the external tanks as it is. So if I can't get to orbit with this I might as well go with the top tank version. And so that's what I do. I've got the wasted tank there. One uh, version of the procedural tanks that I rarely get to use, but in this case it just sort of fits with the curvature of the external tanks. So if you use procedural parts, there is one option, you know, there's the cylinder cone, the smooth cone, you know, polygon, but there's a wasted tank, which is this shape, and this is the time to use it, <laughs> basically. Uh, there are other times to use it, but uh, this is one of those times. Anyway, so up it goes. The question we have is how much delta V does the ship have once it's fully refueled and instead of just crunching the numbers I decided to go ahead and refuel it because that's a little bit more fun and you know we developed the refuelers along the way anyway. Though for some reason the Cybertrons make them go off in a funny way. On the shell itself which currently has the same Cybertron set up they go off more normally so weird here. Alright, we are not quite in orbit, but that was the intention. I wanted to leave all that suborbital instead of having to deorbit it. And this has little Hydrolox engines. The bottom, the wasted tank bit, actually has hydrogen and oxygen so that it can get around the place. I discovered that something got rid of the electric charge in the nose cone. The nose cone part I made, it's a custom part, and it's supposed to have a thousand electric charge but instead it did not have that much electric charge. Some mod realism overhaul or KSB Interstellar decided to interfere with it, so I had to activate the infinite electricity to proceed with this. And then I was able to control it and bring it to orbit, so that part gets to orbit with its little Hydrolox engines using the fuel in the wasted part. 
I tried to turn that infinite electricity off, but the electric charge just goes away immediately, basically. So, back on again it is. And then the smart reuse module, the whole business of cutting the fuel lines in order to make smart reuse happen is probably finicky, but anyway, we have this, there's the Pac-Man. You can see why I call it the Pac-Man encapsulation device. <laughs> Very blatant, but unfortunately the engines are gimbling and therefore clipping into the side of it, so I had to shut off the gimbling. I Failed to have that action grouped, unfortunately. But yeah, it's a tight fit there. I probably should have made the Pac-Man device a little bit bigger with the tweak scale. But anyway, uh, it all worked out as far as re-entry was concerned. It's a nice little capsule, really. And I've used it before, but it's been a long time. Now, I think normally the smart reuse, they would have to like catch it with a helicopter or something, but as far as I'm concerned, the Pac-Man encapsulation device is watertight. It is meant to be watertight. Now, there is a bit of a problem in that the parachutes, I can only attach the parachutes to the base of it because I can't attach it to the animated portion. So, it does this. So it's pretty good that it's watertight, right? Because <laughs> it's going nose first in the thing. That would not be a problem in real life. They could put parachutes on the closing portion of the thing in real life. That's not an obstacle. Now, after that, I decided to try to fix the electric charge problem in many different ways, none of which worked. So this is me restarting after trying one way and... No, no, it didn't get enough electric charge, so I continue to have to use infinite electricity for this part. But there will be a second refueling because this is not enough to fully refuel the ship. It's basically half what the ship needs. So on the next refueler, I'll just make sure it has separate electric charge. There's a tank right underneath the docking port right now that is just ready to go waiting for something to fill it. And I fill it with electric charge. If I had known that this was going to be a problem, it would have been trivial. So all right, it's all connected up and I transfer the fuel and then actually transfer some fuel back into the refueler so that it can deorbit itself. Actually, I didn't need to do that. The docking port nose cone thing actually has the MMHN Mon 3. It has hypergolic fuels to deorbit whatever it needs to do. But I forgot about that. So it goes away and then uses RCS to deorbit in this case. And then I boost up the ship because it was in a pretty low orbit. I had left it in a low orbit because we had to struggle to get it into orbit in the first place. And now I got to got a chance to boost it up. But I was looking at the delta V that we got from half the fuel and it's not as much as I was hoping for. So we'll need to take a look at how to cut out, especially in the back end portion, the extra mass. Here I'm putting the electric charge into that tank that was there underneath the docking port so that we don't have the problems anymore and don't have to use the infinite electric cheat. And on we go with the launch. Otherwise, it's basically the same thing that we had last time. So no big drama. We know it can do the thing. I'm not going to retest the smart reuse portion, the engine recovery. We will assume that that will work just as well as before. As far as shuttle drive launch vehicles go, well, it is what it is. It is allowing the hydrogen tanks to not bear the load and so be lighter. On the other hand, the central structure that we have is actually pretty heavy, and that's one of the things that is holding the ship back that has those trusses and actually they end up being a little bit of a mass to deal with. Anyway, here we, we go with the refueler making orbit on its own. The rest of it will deorbit. And this time I won't follow the engine portion in. And now the ship is in a higher orbit, so it's easier to rendezvous with, thankfully. Along the way, I see Jupiter, Venus, and Mars really close together on the horizon there, which I mean, it, it might not be the rarest ever conjunction or whatever, but it seems like it would be a pretty rare thing. Anyway, over to our vessel. The rendezvous was fairly easy. And lining up to dock with our limpet-like nose cones. 
I don't know if people like that. It sort of gives them a feel of being some kind of sea creature. Alright, fuel transfer. And then, of course, getting rid of it, deorbiting. And that's that. Then the ship is ready to go with its nuclear thermal rocket engines using the hydrogen and the crew free to use the oxygen tanks as additional crew space. Of course, we'd have to be very careful to purge the oxygen tanks and fill up the volume with a lot of nitrogen as well. They have five years worth of supplies, but unfortunately, the Delta V is not great. The Delta V is about 4,600, 4,500 something, and that's not what I was hoping for. So more work needs to be done because it can get to Mars right now. It just can't come back. And, you know, maybe we could detach some ions and do something else. But anyway, for now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.